We'll begin by switching the Explorer's context to objects only and opening up the model and looking for the geometry. Currently it's gray, which means it's unselectable, uh, and I've used groups to control the unselectable selectable attribute. So if I look for my geometry group, we should see that the selectability flag is set to do not, do not allow selecting. So we'll switch that to no effect so we can work freely with the geometry. Uh, at this point you might even want to set up some windows to hide bones and things of that nature so you're not uh, uh, working with them or having them interfere in your viewport, but we should be able to work out just fine. So I'm going to select the mesh and I'll use the rectangular poly select tool, uh, Y, and I'll just select in an empty area to make sure I've got no poly selected, and I'll define a suit um, maybe an area like that. So we've got long sleeves and we'll give them some long pants as well too, up to flare them out at the end of course. So perhaps a selection like that, I'll just make sure I go in and clean that up. There's actually a too many selected in the face, so I can use extended component selection and again using the Y hotkey I can just middle click to deselect polygons I don't want to have involved. I'll move to a raycasting version of the polygon tool, uh, U, and I'll remove, again with the middle mouse button, uh, the polygons I don't want involved. I actually want to have a bit of a neckline here, so I'll include all of the polygons by left-clicking in raycasting mode. To about there. That should look pretty good on the neck side. And on the arm, I'll just finish off this polygon loop. extend that one as well. Alright, I believe that looks good. Yeah, that looks good there. I'll just make sure down here we've got the same thing happening. Uh, we'll have his pants play a little short, because we could have boots if we wanted to and just kind of tuck the pants into the boots, but we'll extract as much information as we can. I'll make a cluster out of all of this so we can always retrieve it if need be later on. If I press enter I can just name that uh, cluster. I'll call it the clothes extract cluster. And from there we'll use that polygon selection, switch over into the uh, model mode, and we'll use a create tool and we'll look under the poly mesh category and extract polygons from the object, but we want to keep the polygons on the original object. We don't want to basically separate them into two parts. We want to keep the original polygons and just extract a separate set of objects based on our, our clothes here. So if I use the Extract Polygons and Keep tool, I get an extracted copy of uh, my polygon selection. Alright, I don't want it to conform to the body as smoothly. It's not a tight-fitting leotard. And it's a fairly loose, loose-fitting uh, set of clothes I want for this character. So I'm going to relax these um, polygons a little bit by using a deformer. If I look under the deform category, uh, under modify, uh, I want to deform the mesh by perhaps smoothing it out a little bit, blending or averaging the vertices on this existing mesh, which are a little bit tight. So if I increase the strength, we start to get a smoother uh, polygon mesh, but we actually lose the size. It actually kind of shrinks in on itself. So you could go in and layer in another deformer. Again, if we have a look at where our deformers are sitting right now, uh, let me just grab the set of clothing. So we actually have our poly mesh extracted and everything's being done in the modeling stack. So we're able to freeze this and it has no relationship to our existing envelope. So I can layer in a push. So if I select that same mesh and add a push, I'll lock that down as well too. So I have access to my strength and to my push. So I can kind of make some pretty uh, large clothes if I wanted to. Big overalls like he's a big engineer or something but I'm going to keep it a little bit uh, looser than that. And so I we just find a nice combination between push value and strength. Again, a strength of zero matches the original shape, and you don't really get as much uh, variety. Again, I want to have a bit of variety between the 
the strong features of the character and the clothing. So we'll increase the strength, increase the push a little bit more. Can do a little bit of modeling here if I want to as well. Keep in mind the clothing is going to relax. It's a little bit larger than the character. And what's important here is to make sure you don't get any penetration between what will be the collider, the skin, and the clothing. So I'll settle on something like this and I'll freeze that. And I'll do a little bit of proportional modeling here with the symmetry function turned on. I'll use the M tool to move into a move point mode. Uh, proportional brush is on. I'll resize it by middle clicking and pressing R. I'm just going to pull on some of these points so they move outside of the range of the Mulcor underlying geometry. That looks pretty good there. Let me pull it just a little bit more. Okay, I'll freeze that. That looks good. I'll turn off proportional and symmetry. I'm done with that mode. If I look in the Explorer, I want to rename this object. I'll be clothing us my clothing geo. And of course, we want to add it into our uh, advanced rig, so I'll drop it in, open up the, um, the model, and I'll add the clothing geo to the geometry group. So now I can control both geometries uh, with my geometry group group that's controlling selectability. So the next part of our uh, clothing problem has been taken care of.